Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm working on my Covington Law Pro. And the Covington Law Pro, what ChatGPT has decided to do is to slow down the responses for my account, not for Covington Law, but for my account. So that's why if you notice when I'm doing videos, he'll take ooh, forever to respond and I have to refresh and forever. Well, they are doing that to me on purpose because I guess they don't want you guys to have any information. You know what I'm saying, dude? Which doesn't make any sense, but, you know, I guess that makes sense to them. So what I've just done is I've just updated it, given it some more prompts to take care of some things so that we can get to the nitty gritty. Okay. As I've told many of you, I chose Hayden Covington for a reason. Because he's the winningest person before the Supreme Court. Now, again, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and Mr. Hayden Covington represented the organization known as Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. He, in his 44 cases, won 86% of his cases. Now, I told you, prior to the courts doing all this stupid stuff in the year, well, it happened right about uh, 2000, the year 2000, 1998 to 2000. Yeah, that's when they changed the system and started blocking people from getting things done. That's when people had to invent and come up with other things. Now, it's already saved it, but what it hasn't done is it hasn't fully saved it. Okay, now it's updated this, that's what I needed. And it's updated this, that's what I needed. But it doesn't want, uh-oh, hold on a second. Doesn't want you guys having access to all of the information coming from these files. Uh-oh, you know what I'm saying, Vern? We're going to... Um... This is a code interpreter in the data analysis. I'm going to leave it on that. I'll leave it on all of these right here. I don't have to see how it says error saving GPT. So I'm not worried about the error. I'm not going to worry about that because here's the thing. I'm going to go to Covington Law Pro. It tried to change the name. And what we're going to do is I changed it differently. So we're going to leave it as is. Now, let's do a routine so that you guys get this. We've been talking about 1099 OID. Only for a minute. I'm not going to keep talking about this because in 2012, a lot of people jumped off the deep end. They didn't do this research right here that you've heard in the last three videos. One of them is on TikTok, so you got to go there to listen to that one. Okay, Eon.TV. All right, hold on. Our right, Eon TV. It's Eon TV on TikTok. Hold on one second. Wake up. Wake up. I don't have a lot of time. I'm working on a appeal for someone. And so I just have a simple set of questions for you. Question mark. Stop listening. This is the delay I'm telling you about. So watch this. We're going to take this and we're going to copy it. Now look at how long it's taken him to just take this question. We're going to go here. No, I can't go there. I got to pause y'all for a second because that's somebody else's stuff. Okay, I just refreshed this chat GPT. You see, this is the free mode, but it is GPT-40 Mini. All right, this ain't, this ain't the big boy. It is the Mini. Now, watch out. Look at that. Look at how quickly that was answered. But let's go back to the other one and see if he's answered yet. Still has it. Oh, look at that. He's answering now. That's how long. This, this is what they are doing. This is not ChatGPT because it's too bogged down. I am paying for this one. And this is what they're doing. So technically, I'm actually doing this video to document the stupidity. All right, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Ten ninety nine OID deals with securities, comma, promissory notes, comma, and bonds. Period. Stop listening.
I don't think he's going to speak. I don't think they want him to speak. And so that's why he's not speaking. He should be speaking, but this is the free one. And the free one doesn't have a microphone. See, it's grayed out. All right, here's the thing. Yes, the IRS 1099 OID is used to report original issued discount income. Here's a quick rundown. Securities. This includes bonds and other debentures issued at a discount meaning they are sold for less than their face value. Now pay attention. When you, pay attention, get a promissory note. You're the issuer of the note. The bank purchases the note from you. Pay attention. Now the bank, that face value that they just purchased your note, you're the issuer, not the bank. The bank converts it by requesting more when they create the other instrument from that purchase. It's called in-clearing credit or in-clearing deposit. We can prove this now. Everybody's account has an in-clearing transaction associated with it, which is going to be hundreds of percentage points higher. The difference between that is your OID. Hold on. Oh, he says commissary notes. Okay, let me correct that. It ain't supposed to be. Oh, you know what? This one don't let you correct. Give me one second. Wake up. I said promissory notes, not commissary notes. Stop listening. Promissory notes. These are written promises to pay a certain amount of money, either on demand or at a specific time. If issued at a discount less than its face value, the difference between the issued price and the face value price of the OID must be reported as income. Now, uh, 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 uh. pay attention. When you give the note to the bank and they purchase your note for you, remember that transaction is not over. You never receive the monies. Why? Because the banks invest the monies for you. That's why they put the monies in your account. So when the bank takes your promissory note to the Federal Reserve, they are requesting on your behalf from the Federal Reserve the in clearing house amount, which is the 100%. Uh, the other guy, his was 900% more than what he initially requested. That's why I tell people settle at 800, be safe, 800. Anyway. They are requesting the money from the bank on your behalf. Take a look at OC10. Watch this. Wake up. You are incorrect, comma. The OC10 form that is signed at closing allows the bank to make the request for Federal Reserve notes on a U.S. borrower's behalf, period. Federal Reserve Operating Circular number 10, under 12.3, dealing with the irrevocable power of attorney, comma, gives the bank the authority and power to act on the borrower's behalf, period. However, comma, this conduct does not remove the borrower from its issuer position respecting the security, period. Thus, it's not the price that it is sold at because it isn't sold yet. Comma, the bank purchases the promissory note from the U.S. borrower at a discount of its value and then sells that note to the Federal Reserve on behalf of the borrower, this is why it operates as a negative or liability on the bank's account, period. The sale price and the purchase price the difference between the two
because there's interest associated with it. There is a redemption value associated with it, all included in the language of the agreement between the parties. Comma permits the principles of OID to apply. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. I'm not going to go into all the details. As a matter of fact, I'm about to bring this to a close. My job was just to try to get you guys to understand what's going on with your promissory notes. Do the research. All of the information is in the promissory note that it applies. Okay. The video on TikTok brings you up to this video. All my videos are successional. It sounds like you're referring to a specific financial process involving promissory notes, banks, and the Federal Reserve, particularly in the context of OC10, the original issued discount. Here is a breakdown to clarify. The OC10 form, Federal Reserve, OC10 form, as you described, deals with the irrevocable power of attorney that allows the bank to act on the borrower's behalf, particularly regarding transactions involving Federal Reserve notes. This form gives the bank authority to handle certain financial transactions and demanders related paperwork on the borrower's behalf, promissory note OID. In this context, a promissory note issued at a discount below face value is subject to the OID rules. Ah, uh, the discount difference between the face value and the discounted sale price is considered taxable income. You got to understand the bank is getting that money on your behalf. Just like that vehicle that we told you about that was purchased at about $35,000 and they requested the in clearings credit that the bank received in check form that they deposited it, 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 of $260,000. Imagine that. He got it through discovery. All right. The bank's role. The bank purchases the promissory note at a discount from the borrower and then sells it to the Federal Reserve. This transaction can result in a financial arrangement where the difference between the purchase price and the sell price, no, 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 no. The bank doesn't sell the promissory note. No, they convert the promissory note to a bond, increasing its value. Ta-da! Remember, they're doing this on your behalf. You are doing it. So when they create that value, go look at the OC10 form. Go look at 12 USC 411 and 412. The bank is doing this as if they are you. You are applying for the capacity to operate as a Federal Reserve Bank, a membered bank of the Federal Reserve. Look at the OC10 form. You are applying for the capacity. Oh, I'm sorry, not the OC10 form, appendix number three of OC10 excuse me, of uh, operating circular number 10. That's what OC10 is, but not the OC10 form, operating circular number 10. Look at what it says it's for in appendix number three. Whew. Liability and redemption. Your promissory note has a redemption on the note. Then it has an early acceleration. The OID is the interest made between the original price, the purchase price, pay attention, and the original issuing price. That's the difference in the OID. They don't like that. They don't like the math that I'm doing, but it's not my math, it's theirs. As the issuer, I am the original issuer. The bank is doing it on my behalf. Let's prove to you and that will be the last thing we cover. If my computer lets me wake up. Oh, Boris. No, we can't change that. Ooh, need Boris. Y'all don't know who Boris is? Go ahead and listen to Boris. I, I like Boris. Uh, Boris is the one that helped me understand about the, uh, the infant estate. If he had not given those two pages of Corpus Juris Secundum, ooh -wee, I, it just wouldn't be. So thank you, Mr. Boris. Now, I've already thanked them personally, okay? Hold on now. Yeah, we, we, we had a good conversation. All right, pay attention. Wake up.
That's the system doing that, ladies and gentlemen. The AI system doing that because I just reinstalled Dragon on purpose to make sure it ain't Dragon. That's how I know they be playing games. This is the 2023 edition. We're doing OC10. Pay attention. We're doing the 2023 edition. Now, I don't know what page it's on, so we're going to... This is 33 pages. It's almost the same thing. So let's go to page 26. I don't know if this has the appendix. Appendix number three, application package for U.S. borrowers. U.S. borrowers desiring capacity. It's all about capacity. It's not about reality. To request to borrow funds. Remember, Section 401 of 12 U.S.C. says only Federal Reserve banks can borrow money from the Federal Reserve. They tell you when you call the Federal Reserve that only banks can borrow money from the Federal Reserve. Well, you are telling them, I am a U.S. borrower desiring a capacity to request to borrow funds from the Federal Reserve. You have to do it through the local Federal Reserve Bank. They are the ones you have to go through. Many of you guys are trying to bypass them. I don't know what you guys are doing. Follow their rules. Don't make up your own. That's right. You heard what I said. Too many of you guys are trying to make up your own stupid rules. That's why you're not getting no place. Sorry, it is so frustrating dealing with the help. 12.3. The borrower appoints the bank with full power of substitution as its true lawful attorney in fact. With full irrevocable power, you give the bank the power to do what? To endorse, assign, transfer, deliver your promissory note to any party. Take any action deemed necessary, advisable by the bank to protect the bank's interest or to exercise its rights under the lending agreement. This is known as an unconscionable, unconscionable clause. Because who in their right mind would literally agree to this if they knew that they were allowing the bank to act in your stead and the bank doesn't have to protect your interest? As lawful attorney, in fact, the bank may take any lawful action to collect all sums in connection with the collateral, the promissory note, not the home. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, these are pieces of a puzzle. You have to put them together. That's what I do. I put pieces together. Go ahead and look at my videos. You'll see that there are a bunch of little pieces coming from all over the place, but they all mesh together. That's why the OID applies. You're going to have to do your research to understand the OID. Don't just go out there doing OID because you think you understand what I'm saying. Don't, 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 don't think about that. Okay? There are a couple of other... Ooh, a couple other aspects to the OID. A couple other aspects. Don't just do it because you think you know. Hey, guess what? I got to go.